Energy. Energy. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About It. With me, Steph Ball Change. And with me, Jordan. Tonight we are reviewing season one, episode number three of Drag Race Holland. So last week we had an exercise challenge with Olga Commandeur. And on the runway they have to give all their faces. Face, face, face. With guest judge Nikki Tutorials. And it was amazing. Envy Peru wins the challenge and Betty Pam Pam and Madam Madness had to lip sync for the life. And what was that about Patty? I know. I know. And then there was the whole BS with the drama of Abby and the corset and Janie JK gave her her opinion. So yeah, it was a spicy episode. So we start this week, we come back into the workroom. Patty's gone home, she's left a mirror message. She said, girls, it was a pleasure. I've had enough, play nice. Now, who do we think that was directed towards? Because I have an idea. Oh, you have an idea? Tell me, babe. I think that might have been directed towards Miss Abby. Yeah, but don't you think that it also was against Janie? I think Janie knows that she played a part as well. So she tries to attempt to go over, apologize to Abby. Abby is not having it at all. Oh, at all. No, stink cooler. Yeah, oh, girl, if that's not on a t-shirt by now. I want to buy a hand towel of that. But she's like, okay, you girls, I forgive, but I don't forget. Yeah, see, I don't get that. I'm like, either forgive someone or don't. Like, if you have an issue, just have the issue. Don't be playing like, oh, it's all fine. And then it's not fine because as we see later on, she clearly still has a little bit of an issue with Janie. She has an issue with Janie complaining about her garment while she's saying that Janie's garment sucks. So it was like- I disagree. It was a, a weird conversation. So we get our Rue message. Our and Rue message. And this week, it looks like we have a drama or acting challenge. Ted walks in and he talks about the prizes again. RuPaul doesn't say it, only in the first episode, but it's in the banger and it's not in the Dutch banger. So I guess that's why the uh, Fred right. wants to promote it. It's bizarre to me. So again, they go, we have the crown, we have the jewels and we have the dress. And now, I don't know about you, every time I see this dress, it makes me like, I wouldn't want to win that dress. Outfit, it ziet a bit goedkoper gemaakt uit. And then Fred talks about our National King's Day. On the birthday of the king, we celebrate his birthday, of course, because that's what you do on birthdays, and we do it with old-fashioned Dutch games. And it's involved with nail pooping, it's sack bouncing. Is that a real thing? Like, is that it... going with the whole pooping? Yes! What? When I was in primary school, I had to do it every year. And there's like, uh, in the city, there's like party, celebration. Everybody goes out drinking. They throw with toilets. It it's was a real thing. So bizarre. So like, don't get me wrong. I enjoyed watching the mini challenge, but I had no idea what was going on. It was like a two minute fever dream to me. Well, Sedegina and Madame Madness wins the challenge and they can choose who's coming into their team because it's going to be a soap acting team. And if it was for you, who would you choose first? I think the girls did the same thing I would have done. I would have wanted Janie or Envy as my first pick. Uh, I think all the girls obviously see them as the two strongest competitors now having a win each. I would have picked, I think, Mama Queen, because she is professional, she can listen, she can give good feedback, and girl, I, she can give me any makeup tips because someone's busted. She's tall, she's beautiful, talented, Judah Roberts. <laughs> Both teams have to perform in an acting challenge called Hoise Drags. 
it's based of Hoys Vrouwen. It's a, it's a soap series with a bunch of rich ladies, a lot of wine, and even more drama and shoes. Yeah, I was watching it, and I don't obviously know the Dutch show, but it reminds me a lot of Desperate Housewives. Uh, that kind of trashy... Well, well, it was more of a trashy Desperate Housewives telenovela, real housewives kind of situation. But Exactly, exactly. But then in a soap series. Yes, very dramatic, overacting. It's the kind of overacting that's really easy to do. So it was surprising to me how these drag queens, who their job is to create this character, some of them really struggled. I know, I would love this challenge. This is such a challenge for me. Um, but some of the girls really disappointed me by the things they were doing. I was like, Whoa. So the team split off into two. We've got Team Sadajin and Team Madam Madness. Now, I think if we start with Team Madam Madness, just because there was more going on for them in the workroom. Exactly. In Team Madam Madness, there is Madame, Abby, Megan, and Janie. Great team. So they're discussing the roles and Megan says that she doesn't want to be the bitchy role which confused me because I've never really thought of her to be a bitch. Mm, I don't get it. If you know that you're good at being a bitch, bitch, be a bitch. Be the baddest bitch of all. Yeah, that's really true. I just think for me, I was like, I've not seen her being a bitch, so it came out of left field for me. She, wa she wanted to do something out of her comfort zone and she nailed that. <laughs> made the choice. Yeah, the team are talking and in the rehearsals, it seems like Madam Madness is really coaching. Well, I liked Madam Madness as a captain. She was really professional. Yeah, I think she did a great job. Uh, what did make me laugh? Because she was really helping the girls who were struggling, giving them tips on how to say their lines and which parts to make funny, where the jokes were. But there was one moment with Abby where she was trying to help her to, I think it was like an ah or something like that. And it was giving me flashbacks to Madame Laquia with the ew. 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 And I was like, girl, is it the language barrier that you don't get some points, but you live here for nine years. So I don't, it was, it was crunchy. That team had an uphill battle and it was really great to see Madame Madness doing such a good job leading them after her performance last week. So that was a bit of redemption. On the other hand, we have Team Sedajin, and there was a lot less time spent on this team. Yeah, and then you have Team Sedajin with Mama Queen, Envy Peru, and Chelsea Boy. Yeah, I think it was clear these were the stronger team. I would want to be on this team. Yeah, me too. Totally me too. Well, no, 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 no. I think I want to be on the other team so I can overshine them. Oh, good point. Yeah, I think... Throughout the whole episode, it was obvious which team was going to do worse just from the amount of time that was spent on them. But we did get one clip where we cut back in the middle of talking with Madam's team. We cut back to Sadajin and the noise that she is making, it sounded, egg. when I say exactly, I mean exactly. It sounded exactly like Trixie Mattel laughing. The word of the rest. <laughs> exactly like it. I just thought it was so funny that they completely stopped the dialogue just to cut to that scene and then cut straight back again. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it was really good. It was really, I really good. enjoyed that. Yes. <laughs> so Team Mad Madness is going first to film their segment. And then there's Rick Paul van Mulligan. He is watching the girls doing their acting challenge and also he's also going to be in the jury. Mm -hmm. He is a Dutch queer comedian slash actor. So yeah, it's really excited to see him. This challenge, just a disclaimer, I do not speak Dutch. I had to just go off the subtitles in this episode. So I'll try and give my thoughts in the who was entertaining. But for the finer point of who was like the best actor, I'm not going to be a lot of use. Just putting that out there. So the challenge begins, we see a picture of a backyard, very luxury. And their video is called The Prodigal Daughter, which sets us up for a great story. Doesn't happen that way. No, no. But I like this storyline better than the second one. Oh I yeah, mean, I mean, they were both total nonsense, but this one made a little bit more sense. 
Exactly, exactly. A little tiny bit. Yeah. So we start with the one that screams, <laughs> Megan. I don't know why this was so difficult for her to like. No, I don't get it either. So Matt, what was she supposed to be doing? I thought she was playing an older woman that was like, oh, oh, oh I can't take this anymore. My husband is having an affair, but she did it. <sighs> we'll come back to the performance with Megan because it obviously wasn't the strongest. Can we talk about the makeup for a little second? Because it seemed like she just stopped halfway through putting it on. What I got after the challenge, Fred said to the girls, like, you only got like a few hours for rehearsal, for makeup, for hair, for everything. So I think that's why she wasn't finished. Or maybe she tried some elder look. I don't yeah, know. I think it was that. I think I'm struggling to think of a time where a queen on RuPaul's Drag Race has done old makeup successfully. So maybe she could have just done it through the characterization and the makeup style rather than actually trying to make herself look older. So Megan's not great. And then next on the team to do her lines is Miss Abby, oh my God. Oh, so I'm no good in this. <laughs> it's a no for me. It's a no for me. It wasn't great again. And I know that I'm saying this and it's a different language and all that, but it seemed to me that she was, if this was Abby, she was like, and then we went to go to the car. No, and she had to play this over-sexually woman, but she was dressed like a 19-year-old schoolgirl. If her drag is about being sexy and beautiful and gorgeous, it was strange to me that she became so withdrawn and shy with that character. It's a no for me. It's a no for me. Sorry about it. Okay, Simon. And then we have Janie Jacquet. Did we have them? I don't think we did. There was like a few seconds for Janie and Madame and then it was just the other team. Yeah, but I do have to say Janie, she looked gorgeous. It was totally different from what we've seen before. Different, but in a good way. I was like, yes, yes. From what we saw, Janie was doing a good job, so was Madame. I knew straight away from that point that they were both going to be at least safe this week because they didn't really show us anything of them. And then we have the other team, Team Setajin with Envy Peru, Mama Queen and Chelsea Boy. Setajin has probably, I guess, the same character as Megan did. So this elder person that is like rich old lady. She was really, really good. I think it just shows that comedy is one of those things that you either have it or you don't. They had the same role, and whereas Megan was more of the worst this week, <gasps> Sedajin was, for me, the best in the challenge with the same role. So it just shows that it wasn't one of those situations where a girl was given a good role or a bad role. It was purely just down to the skill level. Uh, what did you think of the whole Mama Queen pill situation that was going on? Because I oh, thought that was breaching several health and safety regulations. I was like, girl, Whatever. Oh, don't get me wrong. I loved her performance, but like literally giving her things to swallow. Like you've never been given things to swallow. Not on national television. It just seems like such an unsafe thing to do. Find it. Zijn het visoliepillen? A few moments later. Moment dat ze. He needs some milk. And then we have Envy Peru. Yes, she really did. stood out for me. She was like, yes. I was like, yes, girl, I'm living. Woo-hoo-hoo. She was she living her such a great job as well. What I loved that she did, when it got to the last take, she knew that she had one of the smaller roles and she knew that the focus at that time was going to be Chelsea. Spoiler alert, killing Sedajin. So she decides to literally climb on top of the pit crew guy and she makes so much out of a smaller role. And I think she did such a good job again. And she's showing versatility, which is so, so important on this show. She is the one to look out for. I'm rooting for her. I think so too. So what did you think about the performance of Chelsea Boy? It was fine. I think it was a safe performance. She did what she needed to do. It wasn't something that she seemed to have experience in like the other girls, but she still kept up with the stronger team. So I think she did a great job. I enjoyed it. 
Yeah, it was fine. The thing that I liked was that we saw two completely different things in the rehearsal and the final product. Because they are probably filming for hours, I guess, and we only get to see like a few minutes. So it was fun to see both things. We'll get to those later on and we'll talk about it later on. But the final videos did a lot of work to help the girls who didn't do as well. But we will come to that later. <laughs> Elimination day, go. All the girls walk into the workroom and they're asking each other, how are you feeling? And then there is one girl, she is not feeling her oats. What do you think about Abby losing her confidence? I think it's about time. Yeah, so Envy asked the girls who's feeling nervous and Abby and Megan both put their hands up. Yeah, I think it's interesting because Abby last week seemed to be completely delusional about how well she was doing. Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. <laughs> but it was interesting to see that that level of self-awareness from Abby. And even though in the workroom she was like, you know, this is not my week. She was still coming for Chelsea Boy. When she said, I'm going to do fishy, and she said, well, the only thing that I see from you is dead fish. Why? Especially because she's not seen the look yet. But I do hate the word fishy. I don't use it myself. I don't like its origins and stuff. But you don't need to attack someone just because they've not done a feminine look before. And Abby was just starting to redeem herself. And then she threw that little comment in, and I was like, ugh. So I think maybe she needs to, while she's putting her makeup on, just have a little look in the mirror and see maybe why she's annoying some of the other girls. Maybe her corset is too tight so she can't breathe and all the, and she's becoming delusional. Okay, and then we cut to the conversation between Envy Peru and Chelsea Boy and they're talking about drag and that drag is everything. And it's a, it's a nice conversation. I think it's great because they both have different approaches to drag. Chelsea Boy talks about how she sees it as the art form and reflecting her thoughts and feelings that are internal. Whereas Envy sees it more about the feminization and exploring the feminine side of yourself. I think it's great that even though they have the different approaches to what they do. And it's a good thing that they talk about it because every drag queen has a different story. Every queer kid, every queer person has a different story. Well, like Envy said, she was not accepting her sexuality and her identity for a long time. It seemed like they didn't talk at all about being gay, but then she tells us about when she moved to Amsterdam and she became part of this community. She was working on a makeup counter and she learned that actually she is gay. Uh, I think it's just interesting how her journeys obviously informs the feminine look that she goes for. And that's why I hate it when people are like, oh, well, she's just pretty because I think there's so much value in everyone's different styles of drag. And we are all loving the results because she's an amazing person, an amazing drag queen and great television. Yeah, I just love that it was just such a candid conversation between two completely different styles of drag. So speaking of different styles of drag, we come up to Madame Madness. She's getting herself ready. And I was thinking it. Janie said it. It, it has been done. Judo Birch, Google it. You can say whatever you like. What she was doing was a Juno Birch look. Definitely. But is it a bad thing that a drag queen imitates something with someone else? I think some of the other girls were so creative in what they were doing that I can see why Janie called it out. But I was living for the fact that she was still on the last minutes, like gluing those tulips on that jacket, like. Yeah. I think a lot of the girls, it wasn't so much the makeup itself, it was more just that it wasn't a cohesive look and they could see the rush that was going into it, which I guess if they put the effort into what they're doing, it's quite frustrating to see that. Did they bring the looks from home or did they have to make them in the workroom? Or was it just that Madam Madness was so far behind in what she was doing? Because it was not addressed. I was confused. I'm confused. Peppermint's confused. We're all confused. Yeah, I don't get it either, because Fred said that they had to use materials from nature and things. But yeah, what do you do about it? So it is time for the runway, and Fred comes down. He is wearing, first of all, the makeup, such an improvement on last week. He looks gorgeous. Now the dress, I thought was confused. 
it's the same designer of the winner dress. Yeah, so judging from the dress that Fred was wearing today and the winning dress, I just don't think Klaus Iverson is the designer for me. I'm sorry, I don't like either of them. I hope that Fred doesn't keep wearing these dresses because she can look so much better. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, I, you, you, you're, you're, you're right. And then the judges are Claes Iverson, Rick Paul van Mulligen, Fred van Leer, and Nikki Plesson. Yeah, so I think I did a little bit of reading on this. They filmed this literally during the pandemic. So they had to rotate some of the judges um, more than once. So I think Nikki's going to be in another episode. Maybe, don't quote me. But it sounds like they were living on who they could have, so they're doing rotating judges this season. So I hope Nikki comes back. Fred tells us the runway theme this week is Miss Holland, and the girls need to design an outfit reflecting our countryside using natural materials, but then that part didn't matter at all because half the girls didn't use natural materials. Some of the girls' outfits confused me. So let's talk about it. Speaking of the runway outfits, it's time for another Runway Rundown. Hello, it's me, Steph Ballchange, taking you through the looks on the main stage of Drag Race Holland. This week's runway theme was Miss Holland, countryside-inspired looks. And I'm here to take you through each one. We'll start out with Chelsea Boy. I have to say, this was my favourite look of this week, my favourite look of the season, and one of my favourite looks on Drag Race, full stop. She is wearing the chiffon dress that she has sculpted to look like it is blowing in the wind, perfectly representing the windy weather that they do get in the Netherlands. The execution of this is flawless. The presentation on the runway is fantastic. The makeup, everything about this look is fantastic. It is honestly one of my favourite looks on Drag Race. Chelsea Boy has done a fantastic job with this week. I've got to give it a complete 10 out of 10. The next look we have is from Envy Peru. Now Envy's look is inspired by an Incan sun god, I believe. Now while I do think that she looks impeccable, I loved that she had the reveal at the start. She took off the clouds to reveal the sun. I thought that was really clever. However, the theme of the week was Miss Holland, not Miss Peru. So I loved that she brought her own culture. I don't think this was the wrong way to do it. That being said, overall, it was a really good look and really, really strong from Envy. Next up, we've got Miss Janie Jacquet. Now, Janie's look this week, I have to say it's not what I'd come to expect from Janie. Oh. Janie's look is inspired by putting the sea in the plastic rather than plastic in the sea. So I liked the environmental message. And in motion, this look is a lot more impressive than it is just in photos. If I had to critique, I wish that she'd worn a different hair. Maybe something to tie in the plastic theme. But overall, it's a good look from Janie this week. Next up, we have Juno Birch. Next up, we have Madam Madness. She's giving us a look inspired by the cows that she sees, the cows that she sees in the fields, on the plains when she's flying over the countryside. I think maybe she just wanted to do this cow look and kind of made it fit the theme. It's not one of my favourites, the makeup. I actually wish that she had separated the beard from the spots on the face. I think it's such an identifiable part of her drag and we kind of lost it this week. The jacket I also had a problem with. It did look a little bit arts and crafts. I think that was just down to the material that she chose as well as the fit. And as well, the boots didn't really make the look cohesive for me. So this was unfortunately one of my least favourite looks this week. But I do love Madam Madness and she did great in the challenge. Next up we have Mama Queen, the winner of this week's challenge. This runway look is really fantastic. It has to be said, when I think of Amsterdam and Holland, 
one of the first things that comes to mind is the weed cafe culture over there. I think with the tattoos, the headpiece that she has, all the hints to weed, but at the same time it's not green and tacky, I think she did a really good high fashion interpretation of the theme. She knows how to dress her body. She's got this statuesque figure that she always makes look exquisite when she is in drag. And there's not a single thing that I could criticise about this look. It really is a 10 out of 10. Next up, we do have one of the two tulip looks. And this is Megan's look. Now, I appreciate what she was going for, but it was a lot. And that's not a bad thing, but I think she would have done really well to choose either the tulip theme or the theme of the windmills. The dress itself isn't bad by any means. I wish that it was fitted better to the body that she has. It did look a bit heavy towards the bottom, but I think that is from using the real tulips. Let me look at this. Looking at the photo, the makeup is the best that she's looked but I just wish that she didn't have the huge necklace on. I think with editing, it could have been really, really special if she just picked one concept, but nonetheless, she looks great and I love the makeup. <sighs> and then we have the second tulip look, this time from Miss Abby, oh my God. Now, Abby is a very small girl, which works for her in certain situations, this look with the bouquet concept is so, so top heavy that we lose any kind of shape, which is really unfortunate. I can't help but compare this look to the look that Aquaria did using flowers, which I think was much more successful. I wish Abby had maybe brought the floral idea into her makeup and the hair as well. For me, this was one of the worst looks this week. It's not terrible, it's just when I compare her look to the other girls, it's not quite at the same level. And finally, we have Sedajin. Now, Sedajin is one of those queens where everything that she does is executed perfectly. That being said, I didn't really get the concept this week. I understand it was a farmer-inspired look to go with the countryside theme. And I guess there's not a lot you can do with straw. I really liked that she had the red accessories through it. That gave some much-needed colour to the straw look. I loved that she had the bale of hay sitting on top of her head. And actually underneath that bale of hay, I loved the woven kind of wig that she had. For me, this look is execution, perfect 10 out of 10. The concept for me was not as strong as some of the other girls, but it's by no means is it a bad look. It's just not my favorite this week. So that was this week's runway. Again, overall, it was a really strong showing from the girls. There was one or two looks that I didn't really care for. I think the judges had the same views. But overall, really, really strong again. I look forward to the runways every week from the Drag Race Holland girls. And this was another strong, strong collection of looks. Thank you for having me. It's been great to have me. And now back to me. Now, this week's runway, who were your tops and who were your bottoms? Bottom. Starting with the tops. Okay. I loved Andy Peru's outfit, but it didn't match the theme for me. But I love the Golden Princess vibes oh, to die for. My all-time favorite was Chelsea Boy. Yes, absolutely. And I know that she didn't follow the used natural materials, but her look and the presentation of the look on the runway was just one of the best things I've seen on Drag Race in a very, very long time. Storyline was perfect. And she did a really good job with the representation of the wind and the nature and the, the, the weather here in Holland. So I felt her. It was fantastic. And honestly, it does not look like an easy look to pull off either. She gets all the praise from me. It was fantastic. So what did you thought about Seda Jean's hey look? So yeah, Seda Jean, I do think, even though it was well executed, it was a step down from some of her other looks that we've seen. It was a step down from her other looks in the past two episodes. And I think it probably did cost her the challenge win. The other outfit that I would have put in the bottom 
is Miss Abby OMG as well. Um, both tulip looks were not great, but hers was just really, really poorly executed. So that for me was one of the bottoms. Yeah, I, I, I disagree with Santa Jean, but I agree with Abby. Like, no girl, no. It felt like, no, it was, there was no shape. And even though round is a shape, there were no shape. And that hair, that wig. It didn't no. work. It didn't work. It was a complete miss for me. Then we get to see the final edits of the two teams. Starting off with Team Mad and Madness. For me, it was kind of painful to watch. Um, Janie was fine. Madame actually was quite entertaining towards the end, but I think having Megan and Abby on the same team just made that one a lot more difficult to enjoy. Yeah, it was a train wreck. But I loved Meta Madness. I would, I, I won her role. Ik heb een affaire met jouw man. That's ik maar grap. Yes! Yeah, she really pulled herself back from last week. Uh, I think she did a great job. I'm really glad she had this chance to perform and show one of her strengths. I thought it was really good. And then we get to watch the second video, which is Team Sedajin. This one, they had a lot of the stronger girls in it. I think it was a lot more entertaining. They all brought their A-game and they are really good at their job. So it was really fun to watch. And I can relate to some of the roles of the girls. So it was really fun. It was good, it was really great. And you know, we didn't get that tired. Oh, well, she had a better role blah, 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 because they all made the most of what they were given. I think overall that was why their team was so much stronger. Yeah, I get, totally. I love the storyline of the first one more, but these girls really brought it. They were really good. I liked it. So then Fred announces which girls are safe. And this week it is Janie and Envy. Jullie zijn door. And they are plucked that they are safe. They are bitter. Oh, it was hilarious. The faces that they made. Like, I, I get it because they've obviously, they both won a challenge each already. So they've not been safe before, but it was funny. <laughs> I know, but do you think that Abby was allowed to make fun of them? Because she was like, ah, get your girls. She I was think that was definitely because she knew that she was in the bottom and she was looking for something to make herself feel better. Probably. Because I think after seeing all the other runways, like girls, she knew. She knew. She knew. And she did know. So they send the girls back to Untucked and Abby, and I wonder if this is due to last week's shenanigans, Abby straight away just puts in the headphones and goes. Oh, and thank God, because, you know, they cut to Abby and I, I thought it was going to be round two. Thank God it wasn't. She just went, yeah, I'm going to go listen. And again, the girls criticized her outfit and she was like, yeah, I know. I just want to listen to my iPod and... Do my thing. I'm gonna say it, good for Abby for just stepping back. I was impressed. I'm not sure if she's gonna do it like that the whole time, but. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end, but yeah, I'm worried too. All the girls come back to the main stage to hear the results, I guess you'd call them. Uh, what did you think of the judges' critiques this week? I personally agreed with them all. Apart from, I don't get why all the judges liked Madam's look so much. It was, it was, it was fine, but it was, it was not it for me. Nothing. No, I think the judges again, they're being really fair, which I appreciate. For the most part, they're not trying to portray queens better or worse than they are. Oh, exactly. It was weird that they really enjoyed the cow look, which I thought was middle of the road at best. But I live for the fact that Fred always cut the judges off. Silence! Oh, I know. It was great. It was Love great. that. Fred announced the winner of this week's challenge is Mama Queen. Mama Queen, yes. Well deserved, I think. Well, well, well deserved. And then she announced that Setter Jean and Chelsea Boy are also safe. Yeah, I think that's completely fair assessment of the girls. I do think Sedajin for me was stronger in the challenge overall, purely because 
she was as entertaining as Mama Queen, but had more to learn and do. But I think it's completely her runway that lost it this week for her. For me, Chelsea Boy had a better runway than everybody. Yeah, Chelsea Boy had the best runway. Um, I think if they were splitting hers, it was always going to be between Sedajin and Mama Queen because they were the best in the challenge. But yeah. Chelsea Boy's runway was absolutely the strongest. 100%. Fred announced that Madam Madness is safe and that Megan and Abby have to lip sync for the live. And the girls are not agreeing with the judges. Really? Because I think that's fair enough. I think it was absolutely deserved that she would be safe, even if her runway wasn't my favorite. I agree with you. I loved her acting challenge. Really loved. Love, love, love. I won that role, and so that's a good thing she did that. But. The outfit was a no for me, and I, I didn't get why the girls were like, unsatisfied. They didn't clap for her or whatever. I was like, that's rude. But so, you know what? She feels safe. She's there to live another day. And then Abby and Megan have to lip sync for the life with, on the song, Anita Meyer, Why Tell Me Why. I really enjoyed the song choice. Did you know the song? I didn't know the song. I didn't know the song, but it had the vibe of those drag classics. The old school kind of real disco diva kind of feel to it. I really enjoyed the song choice. But is it old school drag or new school drag? See, this is the issue that I has. Abby brings up that she thinks that she's got it in the bag because she's a new school queen. But it's an old school song that Megan clearly performed better too, by the way. And yet Abby wins the lip sync. Yeah, well, Abby pissed all over that stage for me. She did a good job. It didn't fit the song at all. Like, that song has nothing to do with whipping your hair around, stripping your clothes off, doing splits and cartwheels. Nothing at all. I don't understand why the judges made the decision that they did on the winner. Me neither, because Megan gave face. She gave expression, emotion, feeling, and I was like, yes. It was her second lip sync. It was her second lip sync, and maybe that's why she went home. But for me, a lip sync, it's not about just doing tricks and stunts. It's about embodying the performance. Which I think Megan did such a better job for. Yes, but sadly, Fred announces it is time for Megan to sashay away. And we so get sad. with Abby here to slay another day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that. Megan goes home. I've really enjoyed Megan on this season. It's sad to see Megan going home so soon because I was rooting for her. So people follow her on her social, look her up, give her some love. And I am excited for next week because what I saw in the previews, there's going to be a, again a lot of drama. Life. But why should you do it with me? I don't so not even me so naturally. I don't even need to do it with me. I'm a really nepper, nepper, nepper wife. That to me, that explains to me immediately why they've chosen to keep her. I don't agree with it. I like it. <laughs> I want to know what the issue is. Like, what could Sedajin have possibly done? She was screaming like, you're a nasty bitch. And then Sedajin said, well, girl, don't get all this attitude. Sedajin's a nasty out. bitch and Janie's a fake bitch. Like, Abby, maybe, maybe you're the problem. And it's only episode three. So so the girls have been there for maybe a week and a half or something. It's not like everybody is tired or whatever. It's not week seven. No. I mean, we'll see what happens. Maybe it's... One of those things where they make it out to be a huge deal and it's not. I have a crush on Ivy Winters. <gasps> but if they've let Megan go home just for some pointless drama, I will not be happy. Not me neither. But I am happy that it's a dance challenge next week because we don't know who can dance yet. And I want to see some bitches fall over. And it's a reading challenge next week with the what? iconic Diva Mayday. So that has been our thoughts on episode three of Drag Race Holland. Be sure to find us on social media. You can find me on Instagram at Taysprew, T-A-Y-S-P-R-U. And you can find me at, at Joram Soeters, J-O-R-I-N, 
S O E T E R S. You warm suckers. So, babe, thank you for having me. It was exciting. It was delightful. It was everything. It was a great, a great week. A great week. And be sure to check. Dag, lieve kijkers. Ik zit hier backstage. Je ziet het. Ik heb me net geschoren. Oh, overal bloed, 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 zweet en tranen. En ja, mijn avontuur is afgelopen uh, bij Drag Race. Maar die wil niet zeggen dat jullie me nog natuurlijk kunnen volgen. Uh, hoe heb ik het beleefd? Nou, het was gewoon echt één grote ervaring na 16 jaar dat ik gewoon allemaal nieuwe dingen heb gedaan. Um, bijvoorbeeld in een watertank, wie had dat ooit gedacht? Spelletjes, spijkerpoepen, koekhappen, klompen op pimpen. Ja, het was gewoon niet te doen. Ja, ik vond het gewoon een hele leuke ervaring. En ik heb twee keer mogen lipsynken. Ik bedoel, ben de eerste queen volgens mij die twee keer lipsynkt. En dat is natuurlijk wel helemaal heerlijk. Natuurlijk. Ik zat er gewoon helemaal in. Ik bedoel, ik kan geen ratslag. En ik kan ook geen spagaat. Maar ja. Kijk naar mij. <laughs> nee! <laughs> Jongens, Mannes is er ook. Woehoe. Chelsea. Nee, nee, nee. Ik kan niet naar jou. Want de laatste was natuurlijk Abby Oh My God, waar ik tegen moest. En eh... Uh, ja, weet je, ik bedoel, ik vind het allemaal helemaal leuk en aardig. Maar die meid is gewoon, wat zou ik zeggen, de new school queen. En die van een oude meid die gewoon van theatraal theater houdt. En ja, dat is gewoon natuurlijk een groot verschil. Ik bedoel, kijk, de ene is een, een spagaat en een ratslag. Dat is tegenwoordig een nieuwe dweck. En ik ben gewoon een old school dweck die gewoon uh, lip zingt for his life. Ja, met een beentje eruit en twee huffeltjes en zo, je weet wel. Ja, voor de rest, hoe heb ik het ervaren? Ik heb voor het eerst ook meegemaakt dat gewoon de queens onderling heel uh, lief zijn. En ik heb dat eigenlijk als heel goed ervaren. Ik had dat nog niet zo meegemaakt. En ik vond dat heel bijzonder. Dus voor mij was de sisterhood heel belangrijk. En ik vind dat dat ook wel eens gezegd mag worden. Dat het niet altijd haat en neid hoeft te zijn. Tuurlijk, het blijft een game. Maar wat ik hier heb gezien is gewoon heel speciaal. In ieder geval voor mij is het heel speciaal. En dan moet ik zeggen, alle tien. Ja, uh... nee, maar Lekker. alle tien is, 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 ja, weet je, natuurlijk. Ik kan bijvoorbeeld iemand er gewoon uit willen hebben. Boom. Nee. Nee. Nou. <laughs> nee, 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 maar weet je, natuurlijk blijf ik gewoon jouw zure meid, weet je. En, uh... maar uiteindelijk, weet je, ik, ik heb het zo mooi ervaren dat het gewoon... Ja, ik weet niet. Het was voor mij heel belangrijk om, uh, om aan deze wedstrijd mee te doen. Om mezelf in ieder geval te, te hervinden en Dweck heel leuk te vinden weer. En ik stop niet. We zijn nu toevallig in Antwerpen in het uh, fakkeltheater waar wij, je hoort de muziek op de achtergrond misschien, twee shows hebben. Dus we gaan gewoon lekker door. Jullie kunnen gewoon lekker me volgen. Vraag alsjeblieft alles wat je wil vragen. Volg me op Instagram. Megan Lage Streep Schoonbrood. Bye. Be sure to check the links in the description for our guests this week. Follow all of our socials and we will see you next week. Thank you for joining us this week. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, leave a comment and click the subscribe button as well. It really does help us out. Thank you and we will see you next week.